Do you ever imagine traveling among the stars, journeying so far into outer space that our own sun becomes nothing more than another speck of light in an infinite sky? We know that Elon Musk thinks about this a lot, and his team at SpaceX is already laying the groundwork for the future of humanity's interstellar exploration. What we are talking about here is optimistic at best, but what if SpaceX could really pull it off? This is what that might look like. SpaceX is deep into the development of their Starship Super Heavy, a launch vehicle with twice the power of the Saturn V moon rocket, the largest spacecraft ever developed. But recently, Elon Musk announced that he already has plans to take this project to a whole new level. This Starship is designed to traverse our entire solar system and beyond to the cloud of objects surrounding us. A future Starship much larger and more advanced will travel to other star systems. Sending people to a neighboring star is well beyond the ability of any country or even any group of nations at this time, so the goal would seemingly far exceed the capabilities of a relatively small company like SpaceX. However, their corporate mission is to make humanity a multiplanetary species, and they have developed some serious plans in the 22 years since their incorporation. The first major step is to create a fully reusable spacecraft, something they are well on their way to achieving with Starship. This will allow them to transport 200 tons at a time to other worlds at a relatively low cost, opening the entire solar system to human exploration. So as soon as we've got a base on Mars, we can see a base on the moon, but certainly one on Mars, which creates a very powerful forcing function for making space technology better every year, and that is what will lead us to interstellar travel. The next major step is to colonize Mars. In fact, SpaceX aims to send 1 million people there by the year 2050. Elon Musk calculates this is the minimum number required to make Mars self-sustaining and is even prepared to go there himself to help build up the colony. The distance from Earth to Mars varies between 34 to 250 million miles, which means interplanetary travel is only possible once every 26 months when the two planets are closest. This extreme distance and difficulty reaching Mars makes it challenging to govern from the Earth, similar to how Great Britain tried to rule its American colonies from across the sea before the War of Independence. Quite wisely, SpaceX wants Martian colonists to make their own decisions from day one, to avoid the 4 to 24 minute delay in communications and any inefficiencies caused by earthbound bureaucracy and regulations. In theory, this should create the ideal conditions for Mars to become fully independent, unfettered by Earth politics and regulations. This coupled with one-third gravity, a sparse atmosphere, and proximity to the resource-rich asteroid belt should allow Mars to become the hub of a burgeoning space economy. Just as an example, the Psyche Metallic Asteroid is valued at up to 100,000 quadrillion dollars, making it a great prospect for asteroid miners. If we imagine Mars as having a strong local economy and openness to commerce, it should quickly become the perfect place to start any enterprise. In other words, SpaceX wants to establish ideal conditions for all kinds of space startups because space technology would be the mainstay of the colony's economy. Fortunately, there should be no shortage of seasoned space engineers and technicians available, as SpaceX will need an army of qualified people to run their fleet of 1,000-plus starships that regularly shuttle between Earth and Mars. So after SpaceX has established the perfect place to build and operate an interstellar vehicle, what comes next? Unfortunately, chemical rockets can only reach a tiny fraction of the speed of light, which means they would take hundreds of thousands of years to reach the nearest star. Proxima Centauri is more than 4 light years or around 25 trillion miles from Earth, so it would take an incredibly powerful vehicle to traverse this distance, likely nuclear-powered at the very least. No surprise, SpaceX has a long-standing interest in nuclear propulsion, primarily to assist with the Mars colonization process and their long-term plans to go interstellar. 
A nuclear-powered vehicle could reach Proxima Centauri in around half a century, although the vehicle would likely need to be an order of magnitude larger than SpaceX's existing starship. Two to three generations of people would be born on board the vessel during the journey, so they would need a crew of at least a hundred people to ensure genetic diversity when they arrive at their new home. This more advanced starship would need its own ecosystem to support such a large number of people over multiple decades, using a closed-loop system that recycles everything into clean air, food, and water. Realistically, they would also need some kind of gravity to keep everyone healthy, which should be possible if the living quarters section rotates to provide centrifugal gravity. Of course, all these requirements would add a lot of mass, meaning the overall size of this super starship would be huge, possibly a kilometer or more in length. No doubt US Congress would have a meltdown if SpaceX requested hundreds of tons of weapons-grade uranium to fuel each interstellar vehicle. Fortunately, SpaceX has a workaround, as it could mine and refine uranium from surface deposits on the Moon and Mars, or even buy it commercially from asteroid mining companies. Now, despite all these challenges, nuclear propulsion does appear to be the easiest route to building an interstellar vehicle, although Elon Musk rarely does anything that's easy. Pound for pound, antimatter packs an incredible punch, producing roughly nine times more energy than nuclear fission. This additional power should allow the super starship to be less cramped and provide considerably better amenities for passengers. Ideally, it could cut the journey time to around one decade, ensuring the colonists and their equipment arrive in far better condition due to reduced exposure to space radiation. One major challenge to creating such a vessel would be finding the tons of antimatter required, then safely storing it on board. Synthesizing antimatter is prohibitively expensive at the moment, because it relies on giant particle accelerators, but SpaceX has a way to source something that's far closer to their wheelhouse. It's known that antiparticles are captured by strong magnetospheres, such as Earth's Van Allen belt. However, Jupiter's magnetosphere is 10 times stronger than our own, which suggests it could contain all the antimatter needed to fuel an interstellar vehicle. Ideally, an automated starship could harvest these antiparticles using a magnetic scoop, then safely store them on board inside a magnetic bottle. Assuming starship can be refueled at one of Jupiter's moons, it could make its way to Mars orbit, then gingerly transfer the antiparticles to a waiting interstellar vehicle. Once containment is assured, the ship can start loading its passengers, then depart as soon as possible. Of course, there are other ways to power an interstellar vehicle besides nuclear fission and antimatter engines. Ideally, they could use something like an Alcubierre drive that allows faster than light travel. This advanced drive would create a fast moving wave in the fabric of space, which the vessel would surf on to reach other stars. This space wave wouldn't be made of physical matter, so it could theoretically exceed the speed of light, potentially reducing travel times to months instead of decades. As an added bonus, the ship would effectively remain stationary relative to the space wave, so it shouldn't experience any of the normal time dilation effects that plague sublight travel. No one wants to arrive at another star system to be greeted by their smug grandchildren who discovered a faster way to cross interstellar space. That said, Alcubierre has its own drawbacks. It's highly theoretical at present, and would use a vast amount of energy and need some exotic elements to operate, so this is probably something that's best left until much later after the first stellar colonies have been established when our scientific understanding has advanced to the next level. The space industry is littered with companies who professed big plans for space but eventually starved for lack of finance, so why should SpaceX be any different? They say preparation is everything, and SpaceX has done that in spades. Not only have they built Starship, the first Mars-capable vehicle, as a side project, they also created Starlink, a satellite constellation to provide internet from space. This supplies fast broadband anywhere on Earth, and has already gained 3 million customers across 99 countries. But this barely touches the commercial potential of Starlink. Soon, it will link to mobile phones, allowing them to be used in dead zones, giving SpaceX access to an enormous potential market, essentially anyone who owns a phone. The total revenue from combined Starlink services 
could reach $1 trillion per year, all at software-level profit margins, which should more than cover everything SpaceX plans for the foreseeable future. Despite all of this frenetic groundwork, interstellar travel still seems a tall order to pull off, even for an aggressive, forward-leaning company like SpaceX. However, if they manage to colonize Mars and then use it as a springboard to reach the edge of the solar system, the company will have transformed completely. What it might become is far from certain, though certainly something far better suited to make the next giant leap of stellar colonization. Who knows, maybe a fresh approach is exactly what's needed for such an ambitious project, instead of relying on the far-sighted goodwill of Congress members. Now, it's great that SpaceX has all these far-reaching plans to extend human influence and consciousness, except if the project takes thousands of years to complete. Over that time, the world could end if we are sideswiped by an asteroid or might give up on empirical space entirely to explore cyberspace. However, SpaceX philosophy is to hustle so they can achieve meaningful goals on a regular basis to help keep their staff focused and motivated. Certainly, their president and CEO, Gwen Shotwell, is cheerleading for fast interstellar flights. Whether it takes 50 or 100 years, this could be man's greatest triumph, assuming there's no accidents. Restricting most interstellar research to Mars would seem a wise precaution. Overall, there's far less infrastructure to damage, and the population should all live underground in radiation-proof tunnels. Warping space with an Alcubierre drive would pose a whole new level of danger, so any development work would be best carried out near Pluto, but whatever SpaceX manages to pull off, it will be a wild ride into the future.